Hi, we will show in this video how to configure your Promax Sat Hunter or Sat Hunter Plus by using its corresponding PC app. In order to understand how to use the app, we will first explain which steps we need to take to work with the Sat Hunter Plus. The process is divided in three steps detection, identification and adjustment. We press the detection button in order to roughly point the dish to the desired satellite. Secondly, we press the identification button to double check that we are indeed pointing to that satellite. This is the point where the previous use of the PC app becomes essential, for we must have stored in the meter's internal memory the information related to a number of transponders belonging to the satellite we would like to point the dish to. Each of those transponders stored in the device are called test points. We will need to connect the SAT Hunter Plus to the PC using the USB cable provided with it. The device will switch on automatically. Please keep a sufficient battery load in the device so as to avoid that the device switches off during the communication process or just plug it to the mains. First we will need to detect the device. The app will show a message acknowledging that the device has been detected. The first step is to download the content stored in the device to our PC. We will edit that content and load it back to the Sat Hunter Plus. This is done by pressing Tools Receive. Then we will head to File, Save As, and in this example we will save it in our desktop. This is the file that contains the internal contents from our Sat Hunter Plus. We will now edit this file with the information related to the transponders that will be used as test points during the satellite dish pointing process. These test points will be used to confirm that the satellite signal we are receiving is actually coming from the satellite we wish to point the dish to, and not from a different close or neighboring satellite. We will open the test points editing window. We head to Edit Points. First, we will assign a number to the test point we want to edit. The Sat Hunter at Sat Hunter Plus feature a maximum of 50 stored test points. If we configure one test point for each polarization, horizontal and vertical, for each different satellite, we could then point dishes to as many as 25 different satellites. For each test point, we need to input the data related to it. Polarization, 22 kilohertz on or off, depending on whether it belongs to high or low band, etc. All this information can be retrieved from websites such as Linksat. We will create test point number 1, which will allow us to identify hot bird 13 degrees east, and we'll edit the transponder modulation parameters and other related data for that satellite in the app. Polarization for that transponder, band, etc. Finally, we will assign a name for that test point. We need to input the transponder downlink frequency as well but the app is expecting the transponder IF frequency. In order to be able to change the IF frequency field to a downlink frequency field, 
we will need to go to the configuration editor. Before that, we will click OK to save our progress. Now we open the configuration editor. We unfold the edit menu and select config. Here we can switch the transponder frequency to be input from IF to downlink and vice versa. Now we go back to the test point editor in the edit menu. Point. Now we can input the downlink frequency indeed. Note that after we input the downlink frequency, the app has automatically calculated the IF frequency. In this case, that IF frequency is out of the satellite L band, which starts at 950 MHz. This will trigger an error message in the app. The app will inform us of the valid range of values we can input in these fields. The error happened because this transponder belongs to low band, but the 22 kHz is ticked in the app and therefore it is using the high frequency oscillator to make the conversion down to IF, yielding a wrong conversion. For this transponder we need to untick the 22 kHz tone field. If we now press on check, we can see that no error message is popping up anymore. We have now completed the configuration of the first test point. We could save as many as 50 test points in total. In case we wanted to save another test point, we will click in the up and down arrows. However, after editing one test point, it is always compulsory to click on check before you can move to the next test point. We finally click on OK and all the configuration info will be saved. Keep in mind that all this information is saved in our PC for now, not in the SAT Hunter Plus. We need to load the configuration file back to the SAT Hunter Plus. It is possible that during the editing process, the device has automatically shut down to save its battery load. We will then need to switch it on again, go to Tools and press Detect. Before loading the configuration file into the device, we will save it locally in our PC. To do so, we will go to File, Save As. and input the file name. For instance, hotbird 13 e Finally, we proceed to load the configuration file into the SAT Hunter Plus. We unfold the Tools menu and press Send. In just a few seconds, the data is loaded and the device will reset itself automatically. This would be the end of this tutorial. You can create as many of these configuration files as needed. For example, in case you wanted to have one for different areas or crew members that need to share the device. How can you recover a config file? You just need to open it and load it into the device. For instance, we will restore the default configuration file in our SAT Hunter Plus. We open the config file, going to File, Open, and we head to Tools, Send. That is all. We will now describe the general config window. We open it by selecting Edit Config. The SAT Hunter Plus features 50 memory slots to save test points. In this tutorial, we only created one. Therefore, we will inform the device that it does not need to show us the 49 additional slots. This is the polarization and band configuration that will be taken by default by each newly created test point. It will be superseded by whatever we input 
from the test point editing window for each test point in particular. We recommend to leave these two fields unedited for they affect the Set Hunter Plus capability for detection, as well as the LMB Manager field, which should be always on. Here we can configure whether we are working with KU or C band satellite. In either case, we will need to input as well the corresponding LMB local oscillator frequency according to the dishes you are working with. In the next field, we choose whether we will provide an IF or downlink frequency for the transponders that we will use as test points. In this last section, we can choose the measuring units, alarm tones that will be generated by the device, LCD screen contrast level, and finally, which measurements will be shown in the third step, adjustment. For DBBS transponders, you can choose CBR bar, BBR bar, or both. And for DBBS2 transponders, you have the same choices for CBR and LBR. If you make any changes in the configuration, remember to press OK and load it into the Set Hunter Plus. We hope this tutorial was helpful and do not hesitate to contact us in case any doubt arises. You can leave a comment in the comment section or you can write to us through our website's contact form. See you soon!